In this video, I'm just going to go through a practice problem. So I have the question here, a firm in a perfectly competitive market has a cost function equal to, and so we have TC, which is total cost, is equal to three times Q, that's the quantity that the firm produces squared, plus Q plus 64, we're asked if the market price is equal to $13, what are the firm profits? Will the firm shut down in the short run? Will the firm exit or stay in the industry in the long run? I've written on the side here just some rules we need to know. I did a video on these first two rules and I'll link to it below, but really the rules that are applicable to this question is that the firm will shut down if the price is less than average variable costs. And the firm will exit in the long run if the price is less than average total cost. So the shutdown rule is for the short run and the exit rule is for the long run. I've also written down here just our formula for profit. So profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. The first thing I'm going to do then, given these rules, is just find average variable costs and average total costs. I'll also find marginal cost because I'll need that to find the profit maximizing um, level of production. So let's start with average variable cost then, which is AVC. Well, that's just equal to our variable costs divided by quantity. Now, looking at our total cost function, our variable costs is just that, that component of total costs which include quantity. So as the quantity changes, then this component of total cost will change. That's what makes it variable. So variable cost is just 3Q squared plus Q. So I can substitute that into my formula here, divided by Q. So the Qs will cancel out here. I get 3Q plus 1. So my average variable cost. My average total cost is just total cost divided by quantity. Total cost is just here. So it's 3Q squared plus Q plus 64 all divided by Q. That's equal to, well, 3Q plus 1. That's actually just our average variable cost, right? But plus 64 over Q. I will also find marginal cost, which is just the derivative of our total cost function with respect to quantity. Okay, and if I do that, 3Q squared, we bring the two out in front, so that's three times two, and then we take one off the exponent. I actually have a, a video on taking the derivative as well. So I'll link to that uh, below just in case this is confusing for you. But taking the derivative of, of this term will give us 6Q. Then we have plus, well, the derivative of just Q is just equal to one, and the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. Very good. Now, the next thing we need to figure out is, given this price of 13, how much is the firm going to produce? And that's going to be their profit maximization behavior. And that will be for our perfectly competitive Firm to set their quantity such that price is equal to marginal cost. Actually, the more general rule is set marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. It's just that in perfect competition, marginal revenue is equal to the price. Again, I have another video on that, so I'll link to that below as well, just in case you need to follow that up. Our price in this case is 13. That's given to us in the question. And our marginal cost we found before, so that's 6Q plus 1. Let's take away 1 from both sides. I get 12 is equal to 6Q. Divide both sides by 6. And I get Q is equal to 12 over 6, uh, which is 2. So I'll just put it up here. That can be our Q star. That's how much the firm will produce when they profit maximize, given that the, that the price is $13. We can then easily find profits. Maybe we do that first just because that comes first in the question. Our profit, as I said before, was total revenue minus total cost. So profit is equal to, well, total revenue is price times quantity and total cost is just here. We got it in the question. So 3Q squared plus Q plus 64. Okay, well, our price is 13. Again, we just got that from the question. 
times 2, q is equal to 2, that's what we just found, minus 3 times q squared, that's 2 squared, plus 2, q is equal to 2, plus 64. Okay, well 13 times 2 is 26, and then we have to minus. 2 squared is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2, plus 64. Okay, so we get 26 minus, 12 plus 2 is 14, 64 plus 14 is going to be 78. And that's equal to, we're going to get a negative number. So these guys are not making any profit and it will be equal to, I'll just get my calculator up for you. Negative 52. So we can already tell from this result, this kind of negative 52, that the firm will exit in the long run because they're making negative profits. So once we're in the long run and there's freedom of entry and exit, there's no reason for this firm to stay. I mean, there's every reason to leave the, leave the industry. They're not making any uh, positive profit. But we can check this price is less than average total cost condition as well. Before we do that, let's just check whether the firm will shut down in the short run. They might not. It might be worth them trading because they might be able to pay off some of these fixed costs here, um, which are sunk in the short run, so that they've already paid. So let's just check whether price is less than average variable cost. So to do that, I'm just going to find out if Q is equal to two, which we know that it will be if they do trade because that's their profit maximizing quantity, then our average variable cost is equal to three times Q, which is two plus one. I just got that from up here, which is equal to six plus one, which is equal to seven. And so the condition that we want to check is whether the price is less than this average variable cost, right? So our price is 13, our average variable cost is 7, and 13 is definitely not less than 7. So we will not shut down in the short run. As I said before, uh, we have all the evidence that we need to conclude that this firm will exit the industry in the long run just because we see that they're making negative profits. But I will just go through finding this condition so you know how to do it. We just need to find the average total cost when quantity is equal to two. Well, average total cost is equal to three times Q, which is two plus one plus 64 over Q, which is two again. So three times two is six plus one plus 64 over two is 32. Six plus one is seven plus 32 is equal to 39. Now here our average total cost is way higher than our price, right? So is price less than average total cost? Well, price is 13. Average total cost is 39. That condition is met. So we will exit in the long run. And basically it's just because of what's going on here. You know, we're making negative profits if price is less than average total cost. Before I finish the video, I just wanted to show you this kind of result here in our diagrams. So I'm going to clear some of this stuff. So I have two diagrams here, which is what we need if we want to illustrate what's happening in perfect competition. We have the market, which consists of our market demand, which is all of our consumers, their, their combined demand uh, for the product and our market supply. Uh, and at the intersection, that's where the price is determined and the price is 13. Our firm is a price taker, so they take that price. Um, they profit maximize such that marginal revenue, which is price is equal to marginal cost. And we found that that amount was Q star is equal to two. So that's here. Okay. So if the price was 13, the firm will respond by producing two. And to that, we found that, well, actually in the short run, our firm will not shut down because average variable costs was less than the price. And in fact, our average variable cost was seven. And visually that corresponds to, you can see for quantity of two, this level here, that level is seven. 
which is less than the price of 13. We did find for that amount though, the average total cost was 39, which was way above the price. So again, looking at this quantity of two, if we scoot up until we find that average total cost curve, which I have here, that level is 39. So average total cost is greater than the price. So firm exits in the long run. The price is not less than average variable costs. So our price basically covers our average variable costs, right? And, and a little bit more. So we will not shut down in the short run. It is worth, I suppose, just showing visually our profit here, which is negative 52. So profit, again, I'll just write it down here, maybe in green. Profit is equal to total revenue, which is price times quantity minus total cost. And total cost is actually equal to average total cost times quantity. We get that identity very easily from our definition that we had before actually of average total cost. So average total cost is total cost times quantity, multiply both sides by quantity, and we get total cost is equal to average total cost times quantity. The reason why I want it in this form, our total cost in terms of average total cost times quantity, is because we can actually see it on our diagram here as a rectangle. So we have quantity, which is two, it's the green here, times average total cost, which is up here. So this green here is our total costs and our total revenue is price times quantity. I'll just use a blue, I'll use a red. So price is here is 13, it's that height, times the quantity is two. And you can see that our total revenue does not cover our total costs. The difference between them which I can put in purple, is the value of our loss. And that's the practice question. I hope you guys are doing well. Keep being happy and safe. Have a good one.